So you just got a new snowboard, but you're not exactly sure what to do to set it up properly. Should you wax it? Should you detune it? And how do you even set up the bindings? Well, first things first, grab a screwdriver, run it down the edge of the board, and rip that plastic off like it's Christmas. Because come on, this is exciting. You just got a brand new snowboard. If your snowboard has a channel, like on a Burton, be sure not to throw the hardware out in the plastic. This is what will go in the channel to mount your bindings. Now that you've got your fresh board in hand, it's ritual to give her a good first flex. You might hear some cracking and popping, but that's just the layers of adhesive flexing out. And it means you got one crisp deck. But unlike a fresh new era hat where you might keep all the stickers on the brim, make sure you remove all the factory stickers from the base of the board. If you rip them off quickly, you may miss a glue tab. So make sure that base is clean. And unless you wanna look like a kook, make sure to take all the stickers off the top sheet. You can put your own on later and I promise it'll look so much better. And now for the first big question, should you wax a brand new snowboard? If you've got a new board from a reputable brand, you can almost be sure that it has a factory wax and tune. These waxes are fine and will give you a good first day on hill, but it is nice to freshly wax your snowboard yourself. Personally, I wax every brand new snowboard I get before it touches snow. This is not only a nice ritual, but I can also make sure that I'll have the right temperature wax for the first snow this board will be riding. I think it also sets the board up nicely for its lifetime, giving it a wax that will get deep into those freshly opened pores. When I do this with a new board, I take my time baking that wax deep into the pores of that new base. Once I'm done, I'll let the wax cool and the board sit for a while before I scrape. If you don't have a snowboard iron and wax, you'll be okay not doing this before your first shred, but make sure to get it waxed at a local shop after the first few times of riding it. If you're in the Aspen area, Radio Board Shop is the best place to get a wax, tune, or any repairs you need for your snowboard. When you get your new board, the edges will be as sharp as they'll ever be, which in some cases can be too sharp. This is why we detune. Detuning takes the sharpness off your edge, which can help the board from being too grabby and prone to catching an edge on the mountain. This is completely a personal preference in terms of how much a board is detuned, if even at all. Some people don't do any detuning, but this is what I suggest. First, you'll want to make sure you have a fine single cut file. This means the file has a set of single diagonal lines on it. Don't use a file that is double cut or has crossed cuts on it. I've linked a cheap file in the description below, which will do just fine. Now for a minimal detune, we'll just be worried about the edges near the contact points of your board near the nose and tail. Take your file and hold it at a 45 degree angle to your edge and run it towards the tip. You may need to take a few passes with this. For this detune, you'll want to start just past the contact point. You can use your finger to feel the edge becoming dull. A sharp edge will leave filings from your fingernail when you run your nail on the edge. A detuned edge will not. And make sure to detune all four corners of your board. Detuning just the contact points allows your board to be sharp where you need it in the middle of your board for carving, but allows for an easygoing feeling in the trouble spots that can cause edge catching. If you have a board that has rocker in it, you can give a quick detune hit to the middle of the board. If you have magnet traction or a type of edge holding bump down your board, you can give quick detune hits to those if you wish. Personally, I only slightly detune the contact points of my board if they feel like they need it. And like how I mentioned this is a personal preference, I've seen rail riders in the past detune the entire length of their board as they won't be as prone to catching on rails. One additional note is that you'll find the sharpness of the edge around the contact points different from different brands. This might change how much you'll detune your board, if at all. For example, Burton boards typically don't need a detune at all, while I've ridden Salmon boards in the past that have needed extra attention. If this video has been helpful so far and you'd like to support the channel, you can find our SOS Search of Snowboarding stickers available at the link in the description. Thanks. Now, let's mount your bindings. Measure out the width of your preferred stance or eye it up based on the reference points on your board. Set each binding's angle by lining up the arrow to the proper angle. When mounting your bindings, be sure to use a full-sized number three Phillips head screwdriver. This will help you to not strip your screws, but will also help you get the most torque. Little tools like this are nice to have in your bag for adjustments, but they're not always the best when mounting. Loosely screw in the four screws before fully tightening each one all the way for each binding. If you're unsure of what angles to mount your bindings, a good starting point is positive 15 degrees on the front foot and negative nine degrees on the back foot. But it will save you a lot of trouble if you watch this video where I break down exactly how to determine the angles and width of your snowboard stance. Thanks for watching and we'll see you somewhere on the mountain. Peace.